All right, good morning, friends. This week, we are going to use the skill called drawing conclusions when we're reading. That means we're really just going to take what we already know about something and putting it together with what we're reading to figure out. So we're really kind of being detectives when we are drawing conclusions. We are using what we know along with what we're reading to be able to answer a question about the story that we're reading or the movie that you're watching or a cartoon that you're watching. It's really about taking what you know and applying it. That means using it with what you're reading right now. So for example, today, we're gonna to read a story called A Prairie Dog Home. Okay, so A Prairie Dog, we, when we talked about them back in um, Animal Babies in the Grasslands, we talked about prairie dogs. Prairie dogs were in that story as well. When we talked about that, we talked about how Prairie dogs are rodents. Well, another animal that we've talked about in the last couple of weeks is also called a rodent. A beaver is a rodent. And if you think back, what did the beavers have that helped them to gnaw down those trees? What did they have? They had those teeth, right? They had those teeth. So if a beaver's teeth are really good for gnawing or chewing down those trees and a beaver is a rodent and a prairie dog is a rodent what do i already know about the prairie dog before i even read my story if it's a rodent it must have good teeth for gnawing things down very good all right so that's an example of how we're gonna take what we already know. We read about a beaver a couple weeks ago and that they are a rodent. So if I'm gonna read a story about a rodent, another type of rodent today, I already know in the back of my head something about prairie dogs because if it's a rodent and rodents have good teeth for gnawing things, then I can assume, that means I can guess, that a prairie dog probably has very good or very sharp teeth for gnawing things down too, all right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna listen to the story. Good readers listen to a story and they use what they know along with what they're reading to draw a conclusion to be able to answer questions about the story. And we're gonna do that today. In fact, we're gonna do that about finding something that we know would be the same about how a beaver builds its home and how a prairie dog builds its home, okay? All right, so listen carefully to my story. My story is called A Prairie Dog Home. A prairie dog is not a dog. It has that name in it, but it's not a dog. It is a rodent, much like a squirrel or even a beaver. And the prairie dog is also a fine builder. Well, we know beavers are good builders too, right? And they're rodents. The prairie dog's home is underground. With its long curved claws, it digs a deep tunnel. The mound of dirt from digging helps keep the water out of its home and makes a good lookout tower. A prairie dog often sits up on the top of his mound watching for enemies. What kind of enemies do you think a prairie dog would have? A bigger animal that wants to eat it, right? That would be its enemies, very good. The burrow home is surprisingly large. A room close to the entrance is a safe place to listen for enemies. Nesting and sleeping rooms are farther down. Some tunnels lead to back doors. These are very important, these tunnels, because if a hungry snake or ferret or badger crawls into the burrow, the prairie dog must have ways to escape. Pretty cool that it uses those tunnels to escape. All right, so we know that they use their claws, their long curved claws to help dig that tunnel, right? Okay, well, if, listen to the, listen to the second paragraph again. The prairie dog's home is underground. With its long curved claws, it digs a deep tunnel. The mound of dirt from digging helps keep the water out of its home 
and makes a good lookout tower. Now think about what a beaver dam does. When the beaver builds its dam, think about, think back to building with beavers. What did the beaver's dam do in the body of water that it was in? When it built that dam, what did it hold back? It held back water, right? So if I know that a beaver's dam holds back water, how is that similar to the prairie dog's mound of dirt that it digs when it's digging its tunnel? What did they say it did? It kept water out of its home. So I can draw the conclusion that the dirt, mound of dirt that the prairie dog digs up is similar to the dam that the beaver makes because they both keep out water, right? They both keep water out. So today, using what I knew about beavers, one, that a beaver was a rodent, and that a prairie dog is a rodent. So if I knew that a beaver was a rodent and had very strong teeth, then I could make the guess or draw the conclusion that a prairie dog probably has pretty sharp teeth and gnawing as well. Then knowing that a beaver's dam, when they build it, holds back water, I can say that the prairie dog is similar too because when it digs that mound of dirt, it's not making a dam like a beaver, but when he is digging that mound of dirt to build its tunnel, to make its burrow for its home, that mound of dirt is doing the same thing that the beaver's dam is doing. They are both holding back water, okay? So when we use what we know along with what we're reading, we're able to answer questions about the story that we read, okay? All right, today we read a story about prairie dogs. What kind of animals live around you? What kind of animals might live around you? Maybe dogs, cats, bunnies, snakes, I guess. Some people might have snakes near them. Uh, Mrs. Rooney does not want snakes near her. Um, we live near Haverford College and there is a, we see a lot of deer sometimes come over from there and there is this little red fox that loves to walk up and down our streets early in the morning. So if I get up early to go for a walk, there's Mr. Fox. He's out there just walking up and down the street, just as proud as possible, proud as possible. He walks down the middle of the street. Who would think a fox would just walk down the middle of the street? But he does in my neighborhood. All right. so. If I were to write the word fox on my board, is that a sentence? Nope, right? First of all, it's one word. Does it tell me what the fox does? No. Is there a capital letter there? No. Is there punctuation there? Mm -mm. In order for us to have a complete sentence, I have to have a naming part, a noun, a person, place, animal, or thing, right? And I have to have an action word, a verb, meaning what that naming thing is doing. Right now, I just have fox. What is fox? It's a naming word, right? Is it a person, place, animal? Mm -hmm. So I have part of my sentence, I have the naming part, but I don't have an action part. And I need to have an action part in order for it to be a complete sentence. So if I were to do the fox Runs, very good. The fox runs. Okay. Do I have a naming part? 
Very good. What's my naming part? We said it. Fox, right? Okay. Do I have an action part? I do. Runs, right? Now, the fox runs. Am I asking you a question? Mm -mm. Am I telling you something? I am. What am I telling you? I'm telling you the fox runs, right? So what kind of punctuation do I put there? Do I put a question mark? No, I'm not asking you. I am telling you, and since I'm telling you, I'm going to put a period. Very good. Now let's take a look. The fox runs. Am I telling you something? Mm -hmm. I'm telling you about what? I'm telling you about the fox. And what does the fox do? Runs. That's a complete sentence. When I have a naming part and I have an action part and I have a capital letter and punctuation, then I have a complete sandwich. Sandwich. I have a complete sentence and you're going to see why I said sandwich. Oh, Mrs. Rooney. Mrs. Rooney, Mrs. Rooney, Mrs. Rooney. All right. So how about if I write the word Okay, if I write the word, you'll see why I said this now. Sandwich. Okay. Am I telling you anything there? No, I just have the word sandwich, right? I don't know what the sandwich did. I don't know if the sandwich runs. I don't know if the sandwich jumps, it hides. I don't know what the sandwich does. I do know that a sandwich is a naming word, right? Is it a person? No. Is it a place? Is it a thing? It is. It's a thing. So we know it's a naming word. In order for me to make this a sentence, what do I need with that naming word, with that noun? I need an action. Very good. So if I were to write that doesn't show up very well, does it? All right. How about if I use, I use my blue. Okay. I, oh, let's do this. Eat a sandwich. Okay. Am I telling you something there? Mm -hmm. I'm telling you that I eat a sandwich. Who is the person about? It's about I, right? Okay, so that's my naming part. Okay, it's about I. What do I do? I eat, right? So there is my action word. I eat. All right, am I telling you something? Yep. So what do I have to put at the end? A period. Okay. So I eat a sandwich. Is that a complete sentence? It is. I have a naming part. I have my action. I have my punctuation and I have a capital letter at the beginning. Okay. All right. We're going to practice writing complete sentences. Okay. All right. We are going to write about what we had for breakfast. So you are going to write, let me get my copy book page here. And since we've all had breakfast, let's go ahead and write about breakfast. Okay. All right. So Let's get at the top of our copy book page. We're going to write five dash two six dash two zero two zero. Okay. Now I'm going to move you a little bit closer. Okay. Maybe a little bit closer to my board here. All right. And what we're going to do 
is we're going to write a complete sentence, but you're going to finish it yourself, okay? All right, so I, let's start out our sentence with I this morning, okay? I, okay, eight, eight, eight. Okay, what's that first sound? A, the letter A, right? So two finger space, let's write that A. Eight, T, very good. If A is saying its own name, what letter do I have to add to the end? I have to add that letter E, right? Because that's going to make it say its own name. All right, I ate. Is that a complete sentence? It could be, because I ate is our action word, right? What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to add to that, and I'd like you to tell me what you ate this morning for breakfast so that we have a complete sentence. I ate, and then I'd like you to write for me, what did you eat? Now, I also want you to show me what punctuation you're gonna put at the end. Are you asking me a question? Or are you telling me something? Think about that when you're writing your sentence. I would like to know what you ate for breakfast. So I'm asking you a question. If I'm asking you a question, you are, you're gonna show me what you're doing by showing me the punctuation you put at the end of that sentence, okay? I would like you to sound out, write the sounds for, write the letters for the sounds of what you ate for breakfast this morning. All right, now, then when you're done, I would like you to go back and I would like you to circle the naming part. What's the naming part in our sentence? I, right? Okay, and what's our action part? What did we do? We ate and underline your action part. And then what I'm going to see and you're gonna share on Flipgrid with me is I'm gonna see your complete sentence. I ate, and then you're gonna tell me what it is that you ate for breakfast. And you're gonna show me what kind of sentence it is by putting the right punctuation at the end. Remember, I'm asking you a question, so you are going to blank me something, okay? All right, I'm looking forward to seeing your sentences on Flipgrid. Bye, friends.